Hello YouTube, this is uh, Captain Nav. I hope you are all doing well. In my uh, previous video I mentioned uh, flying at uh, high altitude airports is a challenge and today I would like to uh, show you why. To make a valid comparison, uh, I'll uh, first uh, fly around the sea level airport and then uh, at uh, high altitude airport. To start with, uh, we are on uh, Schiphol Airport and I'll run through the parameters. So we have an outside temperature of uh, 15 degrees and uh, toga thrust. You can have a look at the engine parameters, although uh, they are not 100% uh, modeled. And uh, looking at the uh, FMC, you got flap 5 takeoff. I said uh, toga thrust 233 tons, and these are the V speeds. And uh, finally, uh, we'll have a look at the PFD and the QNH of 1013, which is uh, standard and uh, 3000 feet. So, what I would like to uh, demonstrate first is uh, the uh, engine's uh, performance. So, we'll time uh, from the moment the engines uh, start uh, spooling up uh, to the moment uh, we get to 80 knots. So, the engines are spooling up, we get to 55%. Uh, uh, then uh, we'll press uh, the toga button and see how long it takes to accelerate to 80 knots. It's not going to take very long. Uh, as you can see, uh, the uh, acceleration is uh, fairly fast. 80 knots now, so in about uh, 25 seconds. And uh, the aircraft is accelerating very fast. V1 and uh, rotate. So in about uh, 35 seconds, uh, we are airborne and uh, climbing away uh, very, very uh, quick. And uh, even with uh, almost uh, 20 degrees of uh, pitch attitude, the uh, speed is uh, getting uh, away from us. And we are getting a very uh, high uh, rate of climb. The autopilot actually uh, finds it uh, quite hard to cope with. And uh, you'll see as we uh, are trying to uh, level off at uh, 3,000 feet, that actually I uh, won't be able to uh, cope with uh, so much engine uh, power and uh, will uh, burst the altitude. So um, it just uh, goes to show you that uh, basically uh, performance wise uh, at sea level, uh, there's uh, obviously a lot of uh, spare capacity. You see we're approaching uh, 3,000 feet and uh, even though the aircraft accelerates and uh, lower the nose uh, to uh, allow for the acceleration, uh, this is too much and uh, the uh, altitude is uh, not captured properly. Anyway, we'll uh, go back to uh, 3,000 feet. It's just a demonstration. What I would like to uh, show you next is the difference between uh, indicated airspeed and uh, true airspeed. So the uh, indicated airspeed in the aircraft is uh, displayed on the left of the PFD and the uh, true airspeed is uh, displayed on the top left of the navigation display. So uh, basically uh, indicated airspeed is the speed sensed by the aircraft and uh, true airspeed is the uh, speed of the aircraft uh, through the air. If it makes sense, I don't want to be too technical, but basically, uh, that's the that's the difference. Also, uh, ground uh, speed is a function of uh, the true air speed and wind. So, as there is no wind in the demonstration uh, here, then uh, true air speed is uh, the same as uh, ground speed. So, basically, the true air speed is the speed we are traveling uh, across uh, uh, the air and across the ground as well. So as we are now uh, wings level at uh, 250 knots, uh, we'll have a quick look at all the parameters. So we're maintaining uh, 3000 feet, uh, which is also uh, 3000 feet uh, above the ground. QNH 1013 and uh, our true airspeed is 260 knots and our ground speed is showing 261, but it should actually uh, be the same. Uh, so uh, you can see that there is no much difference and we'll have a look at the uh, engine parameters uh, also uh, at the moment uh, the engines are not working uh, too hard they're working in the mid 40% uh, N1 and uh, as the aircraft is uh, trying to adjust the speed it's gonna spool up to about 50-55% and uh, you can see uh, the uh, outside temperature 9 degrees Celsius which is uh, ISA temperature so now we are on uh, the uh, approach and uh, 
Well, you need to be aware is that your ground speed will uh, directly influence your rate of descent on uh, final approach. So the fastest you are over the ground and the uh, higher your rate of descent will be uh, during uh, the approach. And uh, you don't want to have uh, too high a rate of descent. Uh, you want to keep in check the rate of descent. So let's have a look. Uh, we are maintaining about 150 knots and uh, the true airspeed, ground speed is uh, more or less the same. What we need to uh, think of as well as the landing speed, uh, the higher the landing speed is and the uh, more distance you will need to stop and uh, more energy are required from the brakes and uh, more reverse thrust as well uh, required. Uh, so um, this is uh, obviously a factor to be uh, considered. So we'll uh, continue uh, the approach. Uh, we are now at uh, VRF uh, plus 5, uh, 148 knots and uh, flying the aircraft uh, manually. We will try to assess the landing uh, distance required. Uh, the speed and uh, weight of the aircraft uh, uh, will be uh, more or less similar in the second uh, example. But obviously the landing distance is influenced as well by uh, the landing technique. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to assess as best as we can. So we are getting uh, close to the ground. Uh, once again, you can see our indicated airspeed is uh, fairly similar to our true airspeed slash uh, ground speed. And uh, I'll try to uh, land it as best as I can. And uh, from about 50 feet, we'll uh, take uh, the timing. The approach uh, looks okay. Uh, I think we'll uh, get a good uh, benchmark for the landing distance. So that's already uh, been about uh, 10 seconds in the landing phase. We are touching down and uh, the brakes are kicking in along with the uh, reversers. And uh, the aircraft uh, decelerates uh, fairly uh, quickly. And uh, 60 knots now in, uh, in about 25 uh, seconds. So in terms of uh, landing performance, you're getting uh, more or less what you used to and uh, what you uh, normally uh, expect. So now we're going to move on to the high altitude airport. We are in uh, Bolivia, La Paz, El Alto International Airport, which is uh, sitting at about 13,400 feet uh, elevation. So once again, I'll uh, run through the parameters. Our QNH is uh, 1013, elevation 13,300, and uh, we'll climb to 16,400, which is uh, 3,000 feet above the airport uh, elevation. Let's have a look at uh, the temperature as well 15 degrees. We use a uh, Toga thrust, you can see uh, the engines there, parameters, and also uh, we'll see the way the uh, pressurization uh, works. We got flaps 5. And uh, eventually, I uh, will move on to the uh, FMC and uh, flaps 5 here again, a uh, weight of 233 tons and you can see the V-speeds are slightly uh, different. So the parameters are exactly the same and uh, be ready for surprise. So same uh, procedure, we'll uh, start the timing as the engines uh, start uh, uh, spooling up and uh, let's have a look. We're getting to about 55%. Uh, press the toga button. The engines are spooling up to uh, max uh, toga thrust. And uh, the airspeed has not picked up yet. Now we're getting uh, 40 knots accelerating. That's been already uh, 30 seconds. And you can see the acceleration is much slower. 80 knots after about 35 seconds. And the aircraft is uh, still accelerating slowly. V1 is still quite far away. V1, V1 uh, rotate after almost a minute. So rotation, the uh, controls feel actually quite uh, s sloppy. And uh, climbing away now.
you can see that uh, the aircraft is not accelerating as much as it did in uh, Amsterdam and uh, we'll engage the autopilot and maintain about 175 knots uh, in the climb so the rate of climb is uh, not too bad it's uh, giving us uh, a good uh, rate of climb but now it's uh, time to uh, accelerate and retract the flaps and uh, you'll see uh, that the aircraft is gonna struggle a little bit it's going to take a little bit of time to uh, retract the flaps so the speed is increasing towards uh, flap 1 speed so uh, we'll go for uh, uh, flap 1 and you can see uh, we have a fairly uh, shallow rate of climb and now we're passing through the uh, flap 1 uh, speed so we can go uh, flaps up and uh, retract uh, the last uh, stage of flaps so we're almost leveling off at this stage <laughs> you can see that uh, as the aircraft uh, accelerates then it really needs to lower the nose and uh, pick up some speed so uh, obviously uh, it shows you that the uh, engine performance uh, although we are only at about uh, 2000 feet above the uh, airport uh, we are really strugg struggling to uh, get off the ground and uh, just about getting to uh, 250 knots and uh, this time uh, we're not gonna overshoot the altitude it will uh, nicely uh, capture uh, 16,400 feet which I remind you is only uh, 3,000 feet above the uh, airport uh, elevation so it's uh, nicely uh, leveling off at uh, 16,400 uh, maintaining uh, 250 uh, knots we will uh, have a look at the uh, pressurization now and uh, you can see that it's actually uh, scheduling a descent back down towards uh, 8,000 feet which is uh, funny I'm not really sure actually how the um, pressurization works at these uh, high altitude airports I believe there's some sort of uh, special procedure for it anyway uh, we are maintaining uh, 250 knots 3,000 feet above the uh, airport and uh, we're gonna see that our true airspeed is uh, 322 knots so imagine uh, you are flying downwind at uh, 250 knots uh, your speed over the ground is uh, 320 knots the engines as well are working a little bit uh, harder uh, we got about 68% uh, N1 instead of the 50% uh, percent, uh, approximately uh, when you're flying uh, 3000 feet uh, uh, above uh, sea level so we'll set an approach for runway uh, 10 in uh, La Path and uh, you can see in the FMC there the glide path is uh, fairly shallow that will help uh, with the uh, high uh, true air speed having a shallow uh, glide path will uh, reduce the vertical speed on uh, the approach and make it more manageable if the glide path was the standard 3 degrees the rate of descent on uh, final approach will be uh, greater than a thousand feet per minute anyway let's move on to uh, the approach now uh, we are about uh, 7 miles out and uh, we'll have a look at our uh, indicated airspeed 149 and our true airspeed is 194 so you can see that we are much faster over the ground for the same uh, airspeed so you can imagine that our landing uh, distance will be uh, far greater uh, because we are coming in uh, with uh, an extra 45 knots of uh, ground speed also uh, the brakes are going to work uh, harder and uh, there's a risk of uh, overheating the, the brakes above all if we don't use uh, reverse uh, thrust and uh, the amount of uh, reverse thrust with uh, the low uh, density of the air uh, will be also uh, uh, less uh, so uh, the reversers will be uh, less effective in uh, helping uh, slowing the aircraft down looking outside we can see that the uh, approach uh, uh, descent angle is uh, much uh, shallower than what we are used to uh, that's uh, just uh, one thing to mention and I'll try uh, once again uh, to do uh, the best uh, possible landing so we can uh, assess the landing distance I mentioned uh, earlier on uh, as well during the takeoff in uh, La Path 
that the controls uh, feel quite sloppy and that's also a factor for the landing you need to uh, flare a little bit uh, earlier and uh, try to uh, have a feel for what the aircraft is uh, doing So we are approaching uh, 50 feet, 50. right over the threshold, 30. start 30. the flare, yeah. and it's slowly sitting in on the runway, it's maybe a touch of a longer landing, and uh, lower the nose, application of uh, reversers, and the aircraft is uh, decelerating slowly. And you can see that it's taking a little bit longer for the aircraft uh, to decelerate. And uh, that's it. That's the demonstration of uh, high altitude airports. So um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you liked it, uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see uh, more similar content, then uh, please uh, subscribe. I will uh, end uh, the video with a quick table. What uh, strikes me the most is the uh, time to uh, V-rotate, uh, an extra 24 seconds in uh, La Paz. Also, uh, the difference uh, in uh, true airspeed at uh, 3000 feet AGL uh, when you're flying 250 knots indicated. Uh, your true airspeed is uh, 320 knots, which is uh, very fast. And uh, finally, uh, the uh, final approach uh, speed when flying uh, 149 knots indicated, uh, your true airspeed is uh, 189 knots, which is uh, very fast as well. So once again, thank you very much for watching and uh, I will uh, see you soon.